Hello and welcome friends, welcome to another interesting episode where I review vintage school fountain pens. This time I have two beautiful fountain pens from Germany from the 1950s. Before I start today's episode I must tell you that I'm filming this video just uh, as I've returned from a great trip in Italy. It was wonderful guys, but it was too short. Unfortunately, in nine days I didn't have the time to visit all I wanted. And certainly I did not have time to visit flea markets and to find beautiful, beautiful fountain pens. Maybe another time. My health was not so good. So I had to take a pause from uh, uploading videos on my channel. I hope uh, you can uh, forgive me guys, but uh, it is quite, quite uh, difficult. So enough with the personal stuff, guys. I have returned and I hope that I will uh, publish with the help of uh, God a video each and every day. I certainly have the fountain pens. You saw probably lots, lots of fountain pens, lots of unboxings lately. But now I will be focusing on their reviews. And I have lots, lots of information work to do. I have to find out about their history and of course to share it with you guys. So in today's episode, I will talk about those two fountain pens. Probably you are familiar, familiarized with them. They were uh, shown to you in an episode of uh, Free Market Finds in this interesting plastic toy. And on it, we have another German brand, Artus. If you are not familiar with the Artus brand, you must know it is a sub-brand of Lamy, which was used by Lamy in the 1950s. And I have here an example in uh, the original box, an Artus Perfect. You can see this wonderful and wonderful black fountain, uh, uh, blue fountain pen. I remember when I did its review, we have Artus here and uh, we have some engraving but i'm i don't know where yes right here on the cap we have some uh equa equation some some students scratched it to remember on the on its cap or maybe to distinguish it from other fountain pens of its colleagues so this is a wonderful wonderful artus from the 1950s you can see the beautiful nib, a piston filler with an ink window. If I'm not mistaken, it has a, yes, a 14 karat 585 gold nib. So like I told you, Artus was a sub-brand of Lamy. And I think I have also an export version of it. I know it's an export version because it has a price in Italian liras, so 1,700 Italian liras cost this Artus back then. This is a black one with a semi-hooded nib. I believe also a gold nib. I also have this in my collection and you can uh, check them out right here in the link if you want to see their reviews. So enough with the um, Artus fountain pens. There are some nice fountain pens from the 1950s. Let me show you the stars of this video. And let me see. I will take this one out and the other one out. First, I must tell you the price of uh, those two fountain pens which you will see they are identical they are the same model so for those two fountain pens and for this plastic atui i paid around 200 lays or 40.41 euros or 44.39 american dollars so for one pen 
I paid around 20 euros or 22 American dollars. So let me show it to you. It is a beautiful piece from the 1950s. It was made just after Faber Castell took out the Osmia factory and started producing fountain pens there. This is an iconic school fountain pen from the Germany in the 1950s. You can see it has this cigar shape. It's classical in this color, a classic color, black schwarz. In fact, this was the most popular color in Germany back then. Of course, they also produced it in different colors, but that were intended for the export market. It has those beautiful gold-plated trims, and this fountain pen has something, something interesting. It has a serial number, and you can see it thermically engraved on the cap. We have EK9204, and interesting enough, the same serial number is imprinted also on the body or the barrel of the fountain pen EK9204. You probably can see that they match. And what did they uh, do this procedure? So, because this was a popular, popular fountain pen, it was a great probability for another colleague to have another one like you. So, in order for the fountain pens to not uh, be stolen or misplaced, they issued them with those serial numbers. So, the other one has also the serial number. This time it's a BD6647 and it matches the barrel. You see BD6647. I want to see if their parts are interchangeable and I will see that simply by taking one of the caps and putting it on the other one. So you can see the, the parts match each other. Interesting enough, thermically imprinted just above the piston, we have the model 53SF. And on the other one, you can see 53 SF. Let me see, because I've removed their caps, I will try to put them. So, I'm sorry guys. They cap, and they reveal those two interesting items. So, in my opinion, this is not celluloid, it is injected plastic. It is from the second part of the 1950s, so it is not celluloid. If I take a zoom on them, we can see their interesting, interesting memes. And guys, I must tell you that these are steel nibs gold plated. And on this you can see that the plating has gone away, but on this one uh, just disappeared. I'm telling you that because when I bought them, the seller insisted that they were gold nibs. And he said that this is a white gold nib and this is a gold, uh, gold nib. And uh, I disagreed with them and I said, look, I know for certain then that the Germans engraved their gold nibs. So it should have somewhere 14 carat of 585, at least give me that. And he said that those engravings are not seen because they are somewhere here in the feed zone. So they are not visible. And guys, don't get fooled, those were school fountain pens. And I assure you that these are steel nibs, just gold plated. Of course, I didn't argue with the seller. I uh, said to him, yes, if you think they are gold nibs, they are gold nibs. Tell me about the price. And when I heard the price, I didn't. it didn't matter if they were gold or steel nibs. Again, I think I've made a nice, nice choice 
only 20 euros or 22 American dollars. On the back we can see the beautiful, beautiful feeder. And interesting, the grip section is rather different. And I think that in time this was heavily used and uh, this painting here uh, you can see rubbed away. In fact, you can see that this is uh, has seen more action than the other one because the gold plating has faded away, this has faded away. But interesting enough, the piston is working on this one in the sense that it can draw water and I've cleaned it. On this one it works, but when I take it away, it doesn't take water. So this needs a little bit of service. In fact, when I will do the writing sample, I will use this fountain pen as a deep fountain pen and probably I will ink this fountain pen with a classic blue ink and I will see, I will show you how they write. So before I will do the writing sample, I will leave on the screen the dimensions of these fountain pens and after that I will show you some other fountain pens German school fountain pens from the 1950s that they are in my collection. I must tell you that the, the German fountain pen market in the 1950s is my favorite market of all times. So if uh, you have a fountain pen from the 1950s Germany, I'm interested in it. Okay, guys. Okay, I will put those aside for the moment and let me show you other fountain pens from Germany from the 1950s. I have this beautiful, beautiful brown one and if I'm not mistaken, this is a Lamar, yes, it is an export model. You probably can see here that we have thermically engraved made in Germany. It has a steel gold plated nib an ink window and it is also a piston filler so one of the models from the 1950s i have on my desk i will put this aside now let me show you a quite quite elegant model the famous mont blanc monterosa from the 1950s this is the version with the gold nib and uh, this is the answer from uh, Mont Blanc to the school fountain pen market. This is um, more rarer than other Monterosas because it has a 14 karat gold nib. Usually they were made for students or school children and they had steel nibs. A quite nice piston filler with an ink window. Moving on we have a Geha model, a wonderful, wonderful Geha from the 1950s. Just look at this beauty. In fact, this, I believe, it's a luxury version because it has a 14 karat 585 gold nib, a two-tone gold nib. Again, the multifaceted ink window and the piston filler with uh, this gold uh, trim, which makes it at the higher end of the market but i also have some basic one this is the popular pelican 120 quite quite an interesting one and as a matter of fact this had also serial numbers on it but not all the versions i have here a, a version without a serial number it has just thermically engraved on the cap pelican 120 so this is the fountain pen, again a piston filler, a beautiful ink window, and a steel gold plated nib. And I have other two fountain pens, let me see what we have here. Another Geha, and this is named the school fountain pen, school filler mit reserve tank. So this was designed for school use. You can see the difference between the this luxury version and the simple school version. This has a steel nib, Geha nib, a beautiful ink window, not multifaceted, a simple ink window, and a piston filler. 
And guys, I think I have one more to show you. Yes, another Gera. Simple. This is a Gera 718, as you can see. As I open it, we can see the semi hooded nib, which was a trend in the 1960s. The ink window and the piston filler. So now, guys, I'm ready to do the writing sample. Let me put those aside right here. I will try to change the angle of the camera. And for the ink, I will use this Mont Blanc ink. Let me put this here. Let me put the fountain pens over here. Okay, let me change the angle of the camera. So bear with me for a second, guys. Okay. This is good. And now I will try to get a large, large notepad. I'm sorry, it's the only notepad I have left. Here it is, quite, quite a large one. And I hope that you will see the writing sample. So, let me start with the one that it's uh, still working so the piston is working it uh, was the heavy used one you can see the gold plating on the nib has faded away and here are the places where it was held in uh, the hand and in time the painting has faded away as you can see so this i know i can feel guys so I will take the Mont Blanc ink bottle, we have a royal blue ink, I will gently do this, I will open it, okay, and now I will put it in ink, before that I will take the piston, you can see the piston, it has a plastic piston, this is uh, not a cork wooden piston from the early 50s it is a plastic one from the late 1950s and you can see now the ink window is now no longer visible because the ink was drawn okay let me take a tissue to remove the ink first because it's an expensive ink I will try to put as much as I can back and I have here the tissue and I will simply clean it like this okay it's good I will put this here and now you can cap this fountain pen and I will use it capped now I will give it a little zoom so these guys is a Faber Castell. The model is, I don't want to mistake, so I will read here. The model is 53 SF. It was made in Germany. In the 1950s it has a beautiful steel nib steel nib judging by the way it writes I think it's an M for a medium nib why not let me write with the other one so remember guys this has the piston broken in the sense that look you can see in this lighting i can put it right here but when i need to uh, gather ink with it so when i do this you will see that it doesn't fill with ink so it probably has a hole um some uh, cork is not working so i will simply use it as a deep pen like this i try to write right uh, near this, so a Faber fifty three SF also made in 
Germany in the 1950s with a steel nib, gold plated. I think that this is also an M nib. Uh, if I'm with this model, I will see if we have some flexiness to it. And incredible, we have a little flux, and I hope you can see. So it is a little, little flexible. I like those 1950s German made fountain pens. Let me see how juicy it is. Quite a juicy uh, one. And let me see now if we have some line variation. So here, no pressure, guys. And here pressure no visible no visible line variance okay so if i'm here let me see if i can reverse write with it reverse writing well definitely a possibility it doesn't scratch but you can see definitely uh ink flow problem and it writes like an extra fine one and i can't say it's a good reverse writer but you can reverse write for short short periods of time with it in reverse writing being a juicy nib i expect it to be a nice nice signature one and you can see it signs quite quite nice guys so i will put this for the moment here and now i will take the other one and let me see how flexible it is i uh, use it with um, the cap also i will put this back the cap i let it with the cap like this and you can see it lost its ink flow but it will be gained in a minute or two i hope sometimes when this happens i take the piston and i do it like this i make a little little stain of ink or no gently gently you can see some ink there and now i can stop but i want to okay let me see if now the problem is solved yes you can see now the problem is solved interesting enough this has no flex on the other one, I've sensed a little bit of flex, but not on this nib. Interesting. Now the line variance. Here, no pressure. And here, a little bit of pressure. No visible. Again, no visible line variance. Let me see here how juicy it is. Yes, it seems to be quite, quite juicy. And now let me see. Reverse writing. Reverse writing. So the same loss of uh, ink flow, but it writes like an EF and no scratches. So it can, we can write with it for short sessions. Let me see the signature. Quite, quite nice. Now I will tell you about the... Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So this is a wonderful, wonderful instrument. Let me show you how the other one writes. Maybe I should dip it again in ink before I will do this. Okay. And let me see. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. 
So I'm quite pleased with those two Faber Castles. Beautiful, beautiful school fountain pens from the late 1950s. Tell me what you think about those beauties in the comments. So practically, guys, I've shown you in this episode some other 1950s school fountain pens. You probably can see there's a pattern to them. They are all in this torpedo shape or cigar shape. They all have the ink window. They are all piston fillers. And most of all, have uh, steel nibs gold plated. So they were quite affordable for the school children. Of course, to own a fountain pen like this, for example, in uh, 1950s Italy was a great, great deal because those fountain pens you see on the table were of high quality and usually they lasted you for the whole high school period and they did not have to be replaced because they were workhorses. You can see them, they're still working today. Probably they've seen hundreds and hundreds of hours of... Um, using and uh, you know that the school fountain pens are probably the most used writing instruments out there and uh, sometimes they are heavily heavily used they are dropped they um, are involved in different different accidents and uh, because they lived to tell the story for such a long time they were well well built so guys thank you for your time i will see you at the next video if you've enjoyed this review of uh, the school faber castles from the late 1950s please subscribe to my channel for other interesting interesting content i will see you again at the next episode till then Please take care of yourselves, bye bye and God bless.